is Taryn Williams and it's such a pleasure to virtually be here with you today. And today we're going to be talking about how to find the right influencer for your brand, how to vet them and how to measure ROI. So let's jump into it. So what we know, and I'm sure you are all aware of, is that digital ad spend is continuing to grow. If you have a look at some of the stats that I've got on the page here, by 2022, it's predicted to be an $8.5 billion industry in Australia. And it's obviously the fastest growing in any of the advertising channels. And even more so now with the impact of COVID, We've seen a decrease in spend in out of home and a shift towards these online channels with people consuming more content online than ever before, whether that's across social or online marketing. So I run a platform called The Right Fit, which is a two-sided marketplace for creative talent. Think about it a little bit like an Uber or an Airtasker or an Upwork for top tier creative talent. So photographers and models and actors and videographers and influencers all in the one place. And you can literally list what you need and those talent will apply back and give you a quote. What I wanted to jump into today is how as business owners and marketers, uh, you can use social media to best create content and drive value for your brand, engaging with new potential customers, building brand awareness, and of course, driving conversions. So if you have a little look on the screen, some of these numbers are truly terrifying. And there's a platform that I haven't added uh, that I need to update the slide with, which is TikTok. But when you have a look at it, I mean, there's 1.0 billion monthly active users on Instagram. And I included this slide not only to show you how many users there are on each of these different channels, but also to get you thinking more holistically about social media. It's not just Instagram. Social media includes LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat, podcasts. I mean, there's so many different platforms now that you can be building your audience on. Pinterest is a fantastic example as well. I mean, it's the second largest referrer of traffic on the internet after Google. I mean, that's pretty amazing. So probably the most common question I get asked is what actually is an influencer? If we're talking about social media being all of these other channels, not just, you know, pretty girls on Instagram, who actually is an influencer? And it really is someone who can shape the behavior of others because of their knowledge, because of their authority in that space. And I really like throughout areas of Asia, they call them key opinion leaders instead of influencer, which I think is a really great term. So just think more holistically. It's about someone who's got a really strong relationship with their audience and can shift their behavior. Now, I think this stat is really, really important to think about when we when we think about um, building our online reputation and building brand awareness and brand advocacy. 49% of consumers depend on influencer recommendations for products and services. I mean, that's pretty amazing. And when you think about it, I'm shaped by influencer recommendations all of the time. I'm shaped by someone posting a photo of a great meal at a restaurant. And I think, oh, I want to go and try that. That person has influenced me to go and try that restaurant. I'm influenced by a friend telling me that they've just found the best new eye cream and that I should try it. That is influencer marketing. I'm being influenced by that person. And we've always had influences. We've always had journalists. We've had that word of mouth referrals. Um, but what we have now is online channels that allow us to tap into those at mass. And that's the power of social media. Here's some more statistics that I thought were really interesting. Probably the most important one in here, and I'm not going to read them all out to you because you can obviously read, but 71% of consumers are more likely to make a purchase based on a social media recommendation. That's from a complete stranger on the internet. I mean, that is incredibly powerful as a brand to be able to create recommendations that are going to shape 71% of consumers' behaviors to make a purchase. 
That is pretty damn incredible. $6.50 return for every $1 invested in influencer marketing. Again, I don't think that's a stat you would see anywhere else in advertising. But there's some more stats. One that I put in here that I think is really important is that the engaged Instagram followers are worth more than those on Facebook. So when you're looking at things like average order value, when you're trying to calculate how much you can spend to acquire a customer, just thinking about the difference between those platforms, $65 return versus $55 um, average order value. I think that's really interesting. 75% of Instagram users are inspired to act after viewing a pro post. I think that is also really important and it really makes you think about the um, mobile experience of your website. If you haven't, make sure after this session you go on your own company website and see, is this easy to transact online on my mobile or from a tablet? Because if 75% of Instagram users are inspired to act after viewing a post from an influencer or from a referrer, you want to make sure that if they're going to your website, they're having a good experience. So where do you start? You've heard all of this noise about how important it is to do influencer marketing, but where do you actually start? How do you know what it is that you're trying to achieve before we can even start talking about um, how to choose the right person? Well, I think probably the most important thing is to look at what it is that you're actually trying to achieve. What is the goal? And I've broken it down into these five sort of key areas. Brand awareness. I think this is really, really important if you're a new brand that's launching. Um, or if you're a brand that just doesn't have very good brand awareness yet. Uh, influencers are great at improving consideration. So I think that's a really important thing to think about when you're deciding which one of these, uh, because you're going to use different types of influencers and different types of strategies, depending on which of these um, outcomes you're looking to achieve. Increasing conversions. Now, I do hear a lot of people say, I want to do an influencer marketing campaign and my goal is simply to sell 3,000 units. Well, then that's great. Like that's that's about conversions. And the types of influencers that you would use would be very different to the type of influencers that you're going to use if your goal was to build brand awareness. So that's why it's really important to know at the start, is it about increasing conversions? Because the type of campaign that you're going to run, the type of people that you're going to use um, are going to be very, very different to those if you're, if you're building a brand awareness campaign. They can grow customer loyalty. And I, I always think of this one and think, gosh, it happens all of the time where, you know, if I see a particular celebrity or a well-known person or, um, you know, an influencer using a product I love, that really reinforces to me that I've made a good purchase decision. And that's about growing and building that customer loyalty. Or to create user-generated content. And I think this is one that a lot of brands miss when they're thinking about influence marketing marketing is that they're not just about um, unlocking their audience and finding new customers for you. They're also fantastic at creating content. They're like little mini media production houses. They're the photographer, they're the model, they're the stylist, they're the makeup artist, all in one. So it's really an amazing way to get content made at low cost that you know is going to engage your audience. The next most important thing is actually understanding who your target customer are. And I hear this all the time where people say, well, my target audience is um, anyone over the age of 25 in Australia. For your campaign, any marketing campaign to be successful, you need to get a lot more granular than that. So you really need to break them down into those customer personas. And I always say to brands, if you haven't done your personas yet, do that first and actually name them and label them. Who are these people? So perhaps um, one of your personas might be called Jane and she is a uh, publicist. She lives in Paddington. She's 32 years old. On the weekend, she likes to find new great restaurants. Um, she likes to always have tried new restaurants that have opened um, in the first month or two of them opening. Uh, she shops at Scanlon and Theodore and um, Jack and Jack, and she spends all of her disposable income on looking good. She loves posting on social media. She has a beautifully curated Instagram feed, um, and her most important thing is that she saves up every year to go overseas um, on a trip to Italy or Europe. 
So if you can get really granular like that and you can really down the, narrow down those type of customers, then it's so easy to go, okay, well, what channel is relevant to them? Am I going to be able to find that customer that I want to speak to? Are they going to be on Facebook? Are they going to be on Snapchat? Are they going to be on TikTok or LinkedIn? It's really easy to find them once you know who they are and you've labeled them. The most important thing is how can you add value? Because like any marketing strategy, influencer marketing is not just about you spruiking your brand. You need to be adding value to that consumer's life for them to want to engage with that piece of content. So what can you do to add value? I mean, it could be entertaining them. It could be informing them. It could be educating them. But whatever piece of content you're releasing, it can't just be content for content's sake. It needs to be something that is worthwhile as a consumer for me to want to engage with. I, I always say it's like thumb stopping content. What is going to make me stop scrolling through my feed and engage with that piece of content that your brand or that influencer has made? Now that you've done that piece of work, you can work out who's gonna help me add value. Who is a content expert or a key opinion leader in that space? Who is it that that persona that we just described who would she be influenced by? Who would she be looking to for recommendations, for advice? Who would she aspire to be like? And that makes it really easy to decide who it is that you would be working with. Okay, now I thought here I would actually jump live into the platform, seeing as we are recording, and I would show you how you can go about vetting influencers. So there's quite a few things that you need to think about when you're looking at influencers and deciding who might be right for your brand. And you really want to be thinking about, let's just jump into an influencer. Okay, let's jump into this talent here. Um, you really wanna be thinking about, of course, the quality of content that they create. So you wanna be looking at what sort of images does this influencer make? And are they high quality? Are they the kind of content that resonates with my brand? Visually, is it the same sort of tone of voice and, and guides that we would be using for our brand? Um, so once you've had a look at visually the kind of content they make, then we want to be looking at detailed breakdowns and analytics of this follower. So what you want to be looking at is, of course, their engagement rate. So you can ca calculate that manually um, by looking at the number of likes and comments um, on images, or you can use a platform like ours, or I'm sure there's a thousand tools out there that can help you calculate um, engagement rate. And that's basically how many people are actually engaging with that influencers piece of content each time. And that's really important because you want to find someone not who just has a high number of followers, which is good depending on which one of those um, outcomes you're looking to achieve. Again, we're we looking at brand awareness, are we looking at conversions and things like that. But you also want them to have a high engagement rate and 8.4 is incredibly high as an engagement rate. Anything between one and 3% is a really good engagement rate. You want to look at the average number of likes and comments that they get per post because you will also want to see when, when they've done a post for your brand, how does that compare to what they normally get in terms of likes and comments? Um, you want to see that those comments are really authentic. So are they people just putting emojis? Does it look like pod comments or bot comments? Um, or do they actually look like authentic comments where people have said, wow, that looks like a really interesting product. I want to try that or wow, I'd love to go there. Are they actually engaging with what the influencer is posting? You want to look at their follower growth over time and make sure it doesn't look like they've had any purchase followers. You want to see their overarching audience quality score, so how that compares to other people in um, of a similar number of followers. The audience reachability and authenticity. And then, of course, really, really importantly, the age and gender breakdown of that follower, that influencer. Because obviously, if you're a product that um, is only targeting females, then there is absolutely no point in booking an influencer that has a high number of male followers because they're not the people who are gonna be purchasing your products. And again, as we talked about before, looking at that age range. So if we've um, identified that our target persona is in the 25 to 34 year old bracket, then of course we wanna be looking for people um, who have a high number of followers in that age bracket. Again, of course, we wanna be looking at countries and cities. So if you're a product that is only sold in Australia or even more granularly, only sold in a particular state, if you're a salon that only has one store in a particular state, then of course you wanna be finding people who have a high number of followers in that country and in that state. 
And then the number of posts that they do per week, the brand categories that they work in, and then the brands that they've tagged in the last three months. So what you want to be looking at is have they worked with any competitors? And I guess most importantly, do you mind? A lot of the time in the sort of hair and beauty space, it doesn't matter if someone's worked with a competitive brand. Um, a lot of um, people look for influencers who are just an expert in that space, and that often means that they will have used a, a lot of different products. Other times, especially if you're moving to someone, uh, someone to a long-term ambassador role, then you won't want them obviously promoting um, your skincare product one day and then a different skincare product the next day because that's going to feel really inauthentic. So just having a, an understanding of the things that you need to track and look at before you go about engaging someone for that campaign. Okay, let me switch back to slideshow. So that was some of the things that we talked about and some of the um, areas that you can be looking at. So some of the things that I just touched on that you'd want to ask an influencer before you go about um, engaging them for, them for their campaign. So have they worked with a competitor and do you mind? Again, as I touched on, it's not always necessarily relevant, but just checking and, and having an understanding of who they've worked with in the past. Getting really clear about what content you want created and on what channels. Another question I get frequently asked is, um, if an influencer has created a piece of content for me and I've paid them for it, can I then use it on all of my other channels? Can I use it on my homepage? Can I use it in my newsletters? Um, can I use it for Facebook ads? And the answer is no, unless you've otherwise agreed that with the influencer. So make sure that you're having those conversations upfront with the influencers about where you want to be using that content and getting a quote for that. Make sure you provide them with all of the information that they will need to do a really good job. So that includes things like if you've got brand guidelines, if you've got a brand tone of voice document, reference images, mood boards, a really detailed brief about anything that they need to know about the product or about your brand. Don't assume that they know it. Obviously, you work in the brand or you own the brand, you know the brand the best, but they might not know your company colors. They may not know what's included in a particular product. They may not know about your target audience and who it is that you're trying to speak to. The more information that you provide them, the better job they can do in bringing your brand to life in a really authentic way to their audience. They are, as I touched on before, they're like little mini media production houses. So if you go to them and say, here's who we're trying to speak to, this type of audience, this is who we are as a brand, this is what our values are, these are our brand guidelines, they may come back to you and say, hey, actually, you know what I think would work really well and that would performed really well just recently for a brand is actually a, a long form video blog that I do or is a competition giveaway um, with samples, for example. So have that conversation with them and let them add value. And then being really clear about the approval process that you want to go through. So do you want content approval and caption approval before the post goes live? And if so, when do you want it provided to you? Do you want just one photo provided or do you want them to provide you two or three photos to choose from, for example? So have all of those conversations up front. Now, the other question I get asked is how much should I spend on influencer marketing? And I really say, look, you need to kind of think about it about benchmarking against your other kind of uh, marketing channels that you're using. So, of course, like any marketing channel, if you run one TV ad once on one channel, you're probably not gonna see a huge uptick in new users or new customers. So really think about that. If you run one Facebook ad for one day, are you really gonna to expect to see a huge change in acquisitions from that channel? So be really realistic. Set aside a good marketing budget and understand the industry standards. On our website, we have fantastic little guides that show you on average for different platforms and different channels what you should be paying. Um, we've also got a great um, ebook which um, you can download, which has briefing templates and again, pricing guides to help you set your influence marketing budget. And then as I touched on a little bit earlier, just understand usage and buyout. So if you are wanting to use that um, image that the influencer has created in things like a print ad or on a um, bus back or in your EDMs and things like that, then just make sure you understand the loadings for those and, and that the influencer needs to be paid accordingly. So how do you write a good brief? Um, well, I think the, the biggest one is be clear, but don't be dictatorial. As I said before, um, empower that influencer with as much information as you can about how to bring your brand to life. So those tone of voice guidelines, reference images, mood boards, but that, then let them do their job. They've spent years creating these audiences that 
They know really, really well. They know what's going to perform best. They know what their audience is going to um, respond well to. So allow them to do that. I know sometimes as a brand, it can be scary because in marketing, we're used to being brand first. We're used to telling messages instead of building stories and building communities. And influencer marketing is a two-way conversation. It's not a brand first marketing message. So I know it can be scary, but you will have much better results if you work collaboratively with the influencer. Allow them to help you find that unique angle. So that might be that, you know, they've just had a baby and they've chosen to work with you in this particular product because they see, you know, because it's all organic or it's natural and they're more concerned about that now. So allow them to help work with you to find those angles that they know is going to feel really authentic to their audience. Uh, allow space for them to be creative, but make sure you have it in writing. I do see so many horror stories um, of people who have messaged someone on Instagram or on Facebook and paid them money to create content. They don't have anything in writing. They haven't got contracts. So please, 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 if you're not using a platform like The Right Fit or um, Agents or anything like that, make sure you at least document it in writing. It also just makes sure that you're all really clear. Both parties know exactly what the expectations are. And let them know what success, success looks like. Let them know what it is that you're expecting, um, whether it is, as I said before, like new users or new signups or trials or just positive brand sentiment, people commenting and saying, wow, I'd love to try that or that looks like a great product or whether it is people to follow your Instagram page, for example. So let them know so they can do the best job of helping you. Now, tracking the data. There's a common fallacy that you can't track um, the ROI of influence campaigns, which just isn't true. So um, influencers can obviously provide you self-reporting um, and they can send screenshots of how a post has performed or Instagram stories has performed or how a Facebook post or a LinkedIn post has performed. They can absolutely do all of that. They can send you really clear and easy to see screenshots. Um, you can also use in-paid partnership with on Instagram now, which means that you get full transparency to those metrics. And you can also put paid spend behind a campaign. You can also, of course, give them tracking links. Um, so UTM links. So um, what you can do is provide an individual one of those to every single influencer. And then you'll be able to see not just conversion. So obviously people that actually check out, but you'll also be, be able to see how much traffic they've driven to your website. And then you'll be able to retarget those users, of course, with, um, with retargeting campaigns. So that's really, really valuable as well. Of course, you can give them coupon codes to use at checkout. You can use campaign hashtags so you can track those um, performance of those posts. Um, so I think all of those things are really clear and easy ways. So I included this. It's a little bit heavy, but it is up on our website. But it just shows you how to make a trackable link. And so you can then give that bit.ly link. There you go. And you'll be able to see straight away in your GA exactly how much traffic how many new users, how many sessions, what the bounce rate was, everything that each individual influencer has driven on behalf of that campaign. So what sort of KPIs should you be looking at? So of course, reach and engagement are sort of no-brainers. Um, that's definitely something that you would be looking for and you can roughly um, estimate what they, those would be because you would have the engagement rate from um, the influencer. So you'd roughly be able to say, okay, I know that I should on average be getting this sort of um, engagement rate if I go with this influencer. Brand sentiment, and this is one that people often forget. What are people actually responding? What is that influencer's followers actually responding to that post? Are they just saying nice photo or you look really pretty? Or are they actually saying, wow, like, can you tell me more about the ingredients in that product or what sizes does it come in or where can I get it? So have a look at that. What, what are people actually saying about um, the post? And what are they saying about your brand? Like, wow, I love that. I use that already. Or it sounds amazing. I'm a big fan of their, their brand and their products. So make sure you look at that. Uh, quality of the content, because of course, you want to be able to repurpose that for other um, marketing channels. How creative were they with the storytelling? Um, did it feel real? Did it feel authentic? Did it feel like that they'd really put some thought into this and brought it to life in a way um, that really resonated with their followers? And did it achieve your goals? So whatever your goals were at the start, whether it was brand awareness, whether it was increasing conversions, did you actually hit those goals? So that's it for me today. My contact details are up there on the screen. Um, if you've got any questions at all, please, please, please get in touch. 
and I will make sure to send across the link to download that influencer ebook as well. And don't forget, we also have a huge range of other talent categories on the platform like celebrities, models, makeup artists, photographers, videographers. So we really are the one stop shop for you to bring all of your creative content to life. So I look forward to working with you soon. Thanks so much.